So it's been two weeks with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've had a lot of time with it as my daily phone. And I think now I can give some really definitive decisions about whether or not you should buy this phone and what my thoughts are about this phone. And I will say this, my mind has kind of changed on it in some ways and then in other ways, hasn't changed at all. I got a lot of comments from my last video where a bunch of you didn't agree with all of my, uh, all of my comments about this phone, but uh, I mean, you know, that's the state of the internet nowadays. Anyway, uh, let's get into this thing. I mean, why are we gonna spend any more time waiting around as I tell you about what I think about the iPhone 12 Pro Max in late 2020, right after this. this, this What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. So I decided to do a couple things this time around with my iPhone 12 Pro Max, as opposed to the 11 Pro Max when I bought that. You have to remember, when I got the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I was coming fresh off of a Galaxy phone. So this is my first iPhone really to have as my daily driver. I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time talking about the processor, you already know about that, it's super fast. The processors and phones have pretty much been faster than what you've needed for a long time. It's not like Instagram is opening any faster, but this has been a transition from one iPhone to the other, so I got to learn a couple things about that. And um, some other things which I really appreciated about the iPhone series of things. I do want to say one thing. Um, I know some people are going to jump in the comments and say, like, I'm paid by Apple for this or whatever. I actually just did a video about this very subject. If you didn't catch that, I'll leave a link in the description below about how much Apple actually pays YouTubers to make videos just like this. You might be interested in watching that. I'll leave a link in the description, in the end screen, and probably in the comment below. But of course, no, they're, they're not paying me for this. Um, but I did pay them for the phone and for the case. Now, I went ahead and bought both the leather case for this phone and the silicon case directly from Apple. I get cases offered to me all the time from a bunch of different manufacturers, and most times I don't take them because they send me too many. Then I got like 27 cases for one phone. I don't need that. And there are some great cases out there by tons of manufacturers that I've worked with, and, and they're fantastic. But there's something about an Apple case that is just that next level. I don't know why. I've had really expensive cases. I've had really cheap cases, and they all tend to be pretty good. But these cases are really great. This is the leather case right here and it looks fantastic on this thing. It fits perfectly. Like everything about it just feels like there was a thought put behind it that really just, I mean, I'm kind of in awe. It's just a case, but there's something awe inspiring by this. In the silicone case, man, you know, I love that blue. This thing is amazing as well. But I will say one thing about a really expensive case. First of all, both of these cases are stupid expensive. They're more expensive than they should be. I don't care what the quality is of them. Even the silicon case, which feels so good in the hands. Oh, feels so good. Has one major problem that kind of suffers the same fate as the iPad Pro, the iPad Pro case that you can get the keyboard case. The back is just a fingerprint magnet. It looks like trash after a very short amount of time with this thing. This thing has never really left the house and already it looks just, it looks trash. I mean, it feels great. And if you can wipe off the fingerprints, it looks great, but I, it's a silicon, it's a case. When did you ever worry about putting fingerprints on a case before? Apple, Apple, I need you to figure this out. And speaking of a case and a screen protector, I always put a case and screen protector on all my phones. iPhones have had the unfortunate kind of reality of being scratched easily. We've seen this on the iPhone 11, uh, iPhone 11, now the iPhone 12 series of phones. We have people had scratches left, right, and center. Some of you don't use cases or screen protectors and you know, listen, y'all crazy. Y'all crazy, I ain't doing that. I'm protecting my stuff. And when it comes to a case, putting it on this phone, I'm gonna reiterate something I said in my previous video, which some of you did not agree with. The thing is too wide. It is way too wide. Number one, with a case on it, it's too wide. I'm not going to not have a case on it. So even if it's okay without the case on it, it's too wide with a case on it, I'm sorry. The iPhone 11 Pro Max had kind of a sloping kind of little I don't know, it, it wasn't squared off like this thing is. And the squared off nature of this with a case makes this thing too darn wide to be comfortable. And I have big hands. This isn't a big hand thing. Someone in the comments last time talked about some woman that had some huge ass hands that thought this was okay. I'll, I'll leave the rest of that sentence to you. As for me, it's too damn wide. I love to have a large screen phone, but no one asked for a big ass booty like this. Listen, some of y'all are like, well, you're getting a big phone, you should know better. I've had big phones that are bigger than this, bigger screen wise than this, and never had a wide ass phone like this thing is wide, man. Why are you arguing with me? It's my opinion. The thing is too wide with a case on it. And I'm not taking the case off, so don't even ask. I'm not, I'm not gonna run around with a cracked phone like yours is. I'm not, it's not gonna happen. 
it ain't gonna happen, player. That's maybe one of my gripes. And then also some people were talking about how I, I'm okay with the notch when I talked about in a previous video, how an Android phone that could swing me over without a, uh, an interrupted display and then I'm accepting this. I'm accepting this genius because only one manufacturer makes iPhones. If multiple manufacturers were allowed to make iPhones, I'd probably pick something else. The design of this isn't exactly my favorite. Like I'm okay with it, I guess, but it's because I have to be. I'm here for the operating system and quite frankly, the cameras. And when it comes to the cameras, I'll be real honest, there's not a huge difference to my eye between this and the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I had previous. Of course, Dolby Vision, but I'm not shooting in that. Um, but I will say this thing, while it does take pretty good nighttime pictures, it does kind of suffer from lighting. Like when there's lighting that uh, on like light, how do I say this? So I, I took some pictures here. You'll see that the lights from some of these, uh, the street lights kind of interfere with the picture. I don't know how else to describe this. It's an iPhone thing for sure. I don't know if it happens on other phones. I haven't used any other of the, the latest phones lately to take nighttime shots, but it's kind of annoying. But listen, this thing is always gonna be great for taking pictures. It's just an excellent phone all around. Um, I like the camera quality on it. It's never been a bad thing. It's, and again, I've been using the iPhone 11 Pro Max as my B camera for B-roll um, for the last year or so. I'm gonna do the same thing for the 12 Pro. Obviously, can't take video on the phone itself. So that's not what I'm, well, that's not what I'm doing in this video. So if you need a really good camera, then of course the 12 Pro Max is for you. Now let's talk about battery life, which has been absolutely spectacular on the 11 Pro Max and the iPhone 12 Pro Max carries that on. Two, two and a half day battery life. Last time I said that on 11 Pro Max, people didn't believe me. They later found out it was true. Well, it's true again. This thing is a battery beast and I love that. It doesn't matter what type of technology your phone has. If it has no power to use it, then it's pointless. But this thing is a beast and I love it. I can use this thing all day easily and the next day and I have no problem. Charge it up at the end of the second day, no big deal. Love that I'm getting used to a two day battery life on a phone. Now, am I using it 12 hours a day screen on time every day? No, because I have a life. I don't need to be like this all day. But even if you are a monster beast with the front screen on, you're gonna get all day. I mean, unless you just, live in a really terrible area where the, the phone is constantly trying to get a signal and you're trying to swipe right on Snapchat all day? Do, do you swipe right on Snapchat? I don't even know. Most people don't need this phone. If you have any of the 11 series phones, I just don't even recommend going to the 12 series of phones. There's a couple of differences, but just nothing that's spectacularly different. Um, but one of the things I did like in going from my 11 Pro, my 11 Pro Max to this is the transition from one phone to the other. When I actually, this was amazing to me, blow me away. When I went to transfer my data over, um, it just had me scan one phone into the other, which you may have seen this before, and it logged me into my social media. Even the two-factor authenticated social media I have. That was amazing to me. Every single time this year when I've had to log into an Android phone, and I've done multiple Android phones this year, I've had to re-log into all my social media. It's a real pain in the butt. Maybe there's some software that does it much like Apple, but Apple just does it. It just happens. Right off the bat, Everything is exactly where it was, installed and logged in. Clutch. And I'll repeat, maybe there's a program, maybe there's something that allows you to do that. You leave a comment below, let other people know that Android, I guess, can do that too. But with all the Android phones I've reviewed this year, none of them have done that. And that's all there needs to be said about it. The experience rules all. I don't wanna have to look for it, I want it to just work. So if you're transitioning from one old iPhone to a new one, Apple has you taken care of, man. They really do a great job when it comes to upgrading from one to the other. They wanna make it super simple for you, and they did. But again, if you have any of the 11 series of phones, it's probably not worth buying one of these, um, unless you just absolutely are, need to be on the hardcore edge of things. I had someone tell me in one of my other comments something about that Apple doesn't expect you to upgrade every year, but that's completely not true. On Apple's site, they actually have a program by which you can upgrade every single year. Uh, there's a program where you pay like monthly and then you can upgrade every year, so of course they they would love for you to upgrade every year. But the nice thing about this is, is you get three to four to five years of upgrades uh, from software side of things on your phone. So this phone could last for a very long time. Obviously, I have a tech channel, that's not gonna happen here. But if you are coming from like an iPhone 7 or 8 or maybe 6, and you're going to an iPhone 12, 12 mini, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, you're good to go for a long time. And I do get people asking if they should get something like the Note or the iPhone series, iPhone 12 series of phones. and. Listen, here's the thing. They're two completely different things. It's Android versus iOS. I've made videos on this before. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description below. The question isn't, should you go for an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy S20 or S20 Note? 
It is Android versus iOS. That's your that's your question. The rest is just it doesn't matter. But for me, Apple made a great product that I mean, I don't know. Upgrading from one iPhone to another every year is just not that exciting. I actually don't think it's that exciting on the Samsung side of things either. They're very similar. But the nice thing about Android is when you upgrade, if you do it every year, it doesn't have to be with the same manufacturer. So it can be exciting. You can get a different form factor. You can get a folding phone. You can get a phone that flips out sideways like the wing, the LG wing. Like you can have a different experience. With Apple, you, you just better like this. This is, what you, this is what you better like. So I can see myself getting really bored of upgrading every year for this channel uh, on my iPhones. Unless something drastically changes on the outside or whatever the case may be, they continue to make solid products, but it's just not exciting. And like I said, going from the same manufacturer to the same manufacturer on the Android side of thing may be the same, but again, you have that freedom, which is really nice. But what do you think? I've enjoyed having the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I think it's a great phone. I definitely recommend it for anyone who is in the upgrade cycle. But what do you think? Leave me a comment below of what you want to buy next. Is it going to be an iPhone? Is it going to be an Android phone? I don't know. Uh, for me, this was an interesting experience, but not terribly exciting. I'll leave you a video that I talked about right here about how much YouTubers get paid and some other things right here. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.